Hello class, welcome to our next session. Uh, today we are going to discuss once again the uh, example of Newton's method that we have discussed last time. Okay, so last time we have this uh, uh, problem. Consider this problem of finding the positive number x with cosine x equal to x cubed. Meaning we have to find the root of this function or the positive value of x so that when you substitute it to this equation, uh, both sides equal. But uh, we just need to get the approximate value class using the Newton's method as discussed last time. Okay, so the questions the following. How many roots does the equation have? What are the intervals that contains the roots? And solve for the roots using Newton's method with error of less than 0 0.0001. Okay, so meaning this is our uh, ES pre-specified uh, pre error, which is the ES and our... Uh, you still remember this one. So that's the ES. Okay, so we're given this ES. So that's why in our iteration we have to find the value of the absolute relative approximate error and we have to compare th that with ES. Okay, and then the, uh, we have here the calculation. Okay, so we have to calculate this. Uh, xi plus 1 minus x sub i divided by x sub i plus 1 uh, the absolute value of this times 100 so if this value okay according to this uh, uh, flow chart if this one is greater than es then you you need to go to step number two okay so what is step number two so use an initial guess of root x sub i to estimate the new value of the root x sub i plus 1 using this Newton's method formula. Alright, so we have done this uh, already last time. Uh, we have done this, right? And now we need to answer these questions. How many roots does the equation have? What are the intervals that contains the root? We can answer this only when you graph, when you graph the function. Okay, so that's why it's very important to graph the function so that you will be able to answer these two questions. So, so far we have done this last time. Okay, so this is our solution. This uh, were discussed uh, last time and this is the summary of what we have obtained. So, to, to graph this, what we're going to do, we just go to the, uh, just go to the, the same, uh, just go to this link class. Okay, and then we'll use the, you click this graphing calculator. And now we will graph this given function. So our given function is this one, uh, f of x. So this is what we are going to graph. So you just copy this and we'll go to this link and paste this. Okay, but we need to change this f of x, you change this to y. Then here's the graph. Now, looking at this graph class, it's not so clear, so we can uh, zoom this to make it a little bigger. All right, uh, zoom a little bit more. So, or you just go back. So, from here, you can see that the graph of the function intersect in the on the x axis at only this point. 
at this point. And also from this graph class, as you can see, when you, when you touch this point, you can see here uh, the value. I, I don't know if this is uh, clear with you. There's a number popping up. You see, when you, when you click this, there's a number popping up that is point. So that the exact root is 0.8648. Okay, something. Then the zero there, that is the, the height of the function, which is at this point, uh, that is equal to zero. Okay, so you see two numbers there, that is point, I think this is point eight six eight four seven. then comma, then zero. Okay, so the first number, the decimal number, that is the abscissa, the zero is the ordinate. Alright, so uh, now we can answer the question, how many roots? So, from here, we can say that there is only one root. And now, the second question is, what is or what are the intervals? So, since we have only one root, so we can only say that there is only one interval. So, what's the interval? So, this is zero, meaning the root is located between zero, because this uh, intersection of the x and y axis, this is zero, zero here. So, the origin is zero. Our x at the origin is zero. So, zero and one, meaning this point, the root of the equation belongs to the to this interval 0 1 okay so going back uh, the question was how many roots does the equation have so we have so the answer is here is one no this one then what are the intervals that contains the root so the uh, there's only one interval so our answer here is so what's the interval as you can see here so that is the the root is between zero and one so you can write it zero and one okay so then put this in the uh, open interval format which is zero Okay, so this is the answer for, for this. Now to determine if 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 the error is less than this, so what you are going to do is just uh, use the you you just use the formula class. Uh, the formula for the absolute error this one sorry this one so you calculate this one okay you have x sub i plus one minus x sub i divided by x sub uh, i i think this is x sub i Okay, this is x sub i plus 1. So to calculate this, you make use of this one. So you substitute your initial value, x sub i, which is equal to, I think we use point, if I remember it right, uh, we use, yeah, we use point 0 0.05. So that is our initial value. So that is our x sub i. So you substitute it in this formula. So this is 0 0.5 minus x sub i. Uh, x sub i plus 1, meaning uh, since our calculation, uh, so you can use these values here. So x sub i, you can have your x sub i as your x5, you can use this, and this is your x sub i plus 1. Then substitute that in, in, in that formula, and you will be able to uh, find whether this is less than the less than the what you have uh, calculated using the formula okay i think that's that's it that's all class so if you have any question uh, just raise it during our uh, synchronous session okay thank you very much and see you once again in our next video Okay, bye for now.